our great friends over at Ferry Box have been supporting us on Forging Brains for a while now. Since the time that they have sponsored the show, we have received many great products that I wouldn't have thought about buying, or because I was being a tight ass. But they were sent to me in their subscription box, and now I use those products in my day-to-day practice. Each box is sent bi-monthly, and in those boxes is an array of the top tools and products that have been tested by the greats in our industry. So go to www.fairybox.com and use code BRAINS for 25% off your first month's order. You won't be disappointed, I'll tell you that. What's up folks? I'm here in my kitchen. Before the episode here, I wanted to talk about kind of what it's about. While we were in Fort Worth at the WCB, we thought it'd be kind of cool to sit around or like jump in with some of the novice competitors and see what their reactions were to competing in the novice class and kind of like what they learned from it and uh, if they would be interested in going again to uh, moving up in the divisions or whatever the categories it's going from novice to category one so this episode's a couple novice competitors that have uh, either been going through the season all 2023 in the novice class and are going to be going up to category one next year or some of them this is their first time competing in the novice as well so hope you guys enjoy this episode let's get into it all right what is your name how long have you been shooting horses uh tim holly i've been shooing horses going on six years nice is this your first time competing at wcb it's my second time nice. what did you expect your first time here? Oof. I expect to get some education out of it. There's no doubt about that. And just learning the system, how the WCB operates, it was like really intimidating, like utilizing a striker, because I didn't really have that to practice with. Mm -hmm. So that taught me kind of like not be timid. Like I need more heat here, don't hit here, things like that, you know, so it taught me a ton. You know, it really helped me come here. Right. Did you, was it different when you got here than what you kind of expected though? For like the first contest? Yeah, like first contest and even just like the group. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot more camaraderie than, than I thought, like from like an outsider's perspective, I could see how somebody could get intimidated coming to one of these. But like, everybody's rooting for everybody. Yeah. You know, you see guys in the same category striking and rushing for people. I mean, it's not about like, kicking somebody else down, you know, trying yeah. to bring everybody up. And I think that's sweet. You know? That's what a lot of people kind of think from the outside. Yeah. They just think it's just a, like a bunch of chest beating. And... Yeah, yeah, a bunch of gorillas, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's giving each other a good go. Yeah, Everybody yeah. Has. Yeah, I'm rooting. I mean, like the guys in the novice division, like, just like, like Trey. Trey's yeah. kicking ass. And like, I felt bad, like, during his match play, he didn't have anybody, like, strike for him. Not that, like, I'm a fire guy by any means, but I was like, can I step in? And, yeah. you know, I asked Daniel Jones, he was like, yeah, so I'm rooting for Trey just as much as I'm rooting for anybody else. That's awesome, man. Uh, what did you do to prepare? Um, I practiced to the best of my abilities. Um, tooled up was a big thing. Okay. Like, Wisconsin, um, I wrecked a lot of shit. <laughs> so I learned real quick that, like, getting my punches heat treated and more specifically just tuned up yeah was like probably my biggest enemy okay. um, was there somebody you're able to help you with tuning yeah, them up yeah so dick becker okay yeah, yeah. yeah. dick dick's my guy i i worked with him for quite some time after showing school wow. so he knows like when a contest is coming up you know like at his shop like two days before and he's like getting ready okay like don't wreck this one right off the go right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is your good <laughs> this, this is the good, good one, one. <laughs> <laughs> So like those are like I was gonna ask you any like hurdles for practice. Do you think tooling was the biggest hurdle? Uh, tooling and then like uh, like I don't have a coat fire at home yet. Okay. Uh, it's just a forge master. So like figuring out heat mm -hmm. is is kind of tough. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think I need to like step out of my my comfort zone and, and, and maybe do some more traveling to practice. Yeah. Because like it's real easy to like make a banger in the shop when it's just you. 
but then like when you step up and there's a little bit of pressure but also a little bit of guidance it changes a lot do you start a clock when you're practicing at home or yeah you and I try, I, I try to drop f at least five minutes yep. on my time like we had hour goes yep. you know so i try to set the timer for for 55 minutes because like i figure if i can get it in 55 minutes 60 would be no problem 60 shouldn't be an issue but then also like your heats are quicker in the coke fire yeah. and then you also have somebody to strike your fuller and stuff like that are you able to practice any two-man we haven't yourself? we haven't um but like dan brown is, yep. is close and uh i think we're gonna make a pretty big commitment to next year Good. so that will be you know more of him and I practice in two mangoes. Is it hard when you come here and you haven't practiced with a striker, then you're paired up with a striker, and all of a sudden now your system's a little different because you have somebody? Uh, I think it's hard if you don't know the guy, to be honest with you. And I think that's where like the timidness comes from. Yeah. You know, because I mean you don't want to show your ass. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> ultimately, like that's probably what you should do. Yeah. Right. I think that's a I think that's a common thing with the novices is that. They're like, okay, this guy is better than me, my yeah. strikers. You try yeah. to choose the strikers better yeah, than you. Yeah, for sure. And then you're like, well, I want his advice, but then you're kind of like, all he he kind of takes is like, this guy don't have a plan. Right. There's a self consciousness. There is. There. Yeah. For sure. For sure. That's like, I got real lucky. Like, Dan came to the contest, and you know, I can tell Dan to kick rocks and not feel bad about it. Yep. You know, versus like, if Daniel Jones is striking for me, I, my nerves would definitely be having racked. Yeah. You know, there's a totally different, like, mindset. So, I mean, I don't know how somebody would overcome that if they didn't have, I guess, just toughen it up. Just do it. Yeah, just, just do, do it. it man. Do Did it. you have any uh, changes from day one to day two? Big time. Big time. So, I felt like I had a pretty good go yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, I was really happy with my shapes and, like, it forged. It wasn't chunky. But, like, after the fact, somehow... I don't know how I did it, but my toenails were real racked. Like my media was way up, mm -hmm. and that put me way down the table. So then I'm like, I don't know how I did it, so I don't want to like try to fix too much or change too much, and then make something else worse. Yeah. So today, I uh, I pretty much knocked the shoes completely around, and then once I got like my shape where I want, I went through and just T squared everything. Yeah. And I mean, like I lucked out. Um, I placed really well today. Good. Versus yesterday, and just that little bit of change, and it's a fairly easy change in easy my opinion. Easy change, and it seems little, but it is the line. Yeah, big time. That's that's the box. The yeah, line, first line of the box. Yeah. Toenails off. Yeah, I was sitting good until Jerry Schwanabo got done. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you let your emotions get to you when the clock starts? Um, I, I do at first, I think. Um, I really did in Wisconsin, like so like Madison was my first go. I didn't make the Edgewood and then here. Um, I remember like trying to like mark my full ring and my elbows just like Yeah, kick away. away. Yeah, you're like you're scratching <laughs> a dog behind the ear, you know? Yeah. Um, but like I said, having Dan here, I don't know, it's like it's my buddy. Yeah. You know, I don't know where the, the disconnect is, but it definitely helped it settled me down a ton. So So are you happy with your results? Yeah. Yeah, I know where I need to improve. Um, That's huge. There's, there's, a, I think there's a little bit of difference that I didn't really recognize between judges, like what Mike was looking for in Madison. Um, I can't enunciate the judge's name, so I'll just say the judges that we have here today. Yeah. Frenchman. Frenchman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, I heard Carl's gonna judge Madison. So when we get to Madison, I'm definitely gonna ask him some more specific questions, like. Are you looking for the specimen or are you looking for a shape? Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. So, uh, Which things are going to be dictate? Yeah. So are you going to do another novice or are you going to go to the cast? Yeah, so I think I'll do one more novice. Um, I don't know if that's like the right direction for me. There's no right. Right but back, I, 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 I definitely think I'll take one more novice if I can. Nice. Because like seeing like it's such a big step. Yeah. I mean, at least it is in my perspective. It is a big step. You know, um, that if I can get a little bit more experience just using a striker in this setting yeah. before I step up to like some really difficult shoes, I think that'll benefit me. Yeah. You know? And it'll get rid of like what little bit of like nervousness I think I have left for working out of the go fire and being here. For sure.
Definitely. So, awesome, man. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, thanks for having yeah. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Gab. Yeah. Let's talk about our newest sponsor of Forge and Brains podcast, Yukon Forge. If you're a fan of the show, then you probably already heard the interview we did with John McNerney and all the badass things he's accomplished in his career, as well as the type of character this man has. John's graciously offering you guys 10% off on anything you order when you go to www.yukonforge.com and use code BRAINS at checkout. On his website, you'll find he has a variety of high-quality, hand-built tools made by him personally. His hoof knives are some of the best on the market. All his tongs are forged from 4140 steel to hold up to whatever you're grabbing and holding. John's been developing a new hammer out of 4140 steel that looks pretty dang sick, and I can't wait to try one. His fullers are handmade from S7, and I personally know of some that have withstood the years of hammer blows. Also, a new and unique tool John has developed is the propane nut. There's nothing worse than stripping out your propane regulator from not having the right tool. The Yukon Forge propane nut replaces whatever you had been using for a simple tool that you can tighten and loosen with your fingertips with ease. So go to www.yukonforge.com and use code BRAINS for 10% off your order. That's a hell of a deal, my friends. Let her rip. Sweet. All right, what is your name? Uh, Tanner Nolan. How long have you been shooting for, Tanner? Uh, about 10 years. Okay. Uh, is this your first time competing at the WCB? Uh, third. This is my last novice. Okay, sweet. Man. What did you expect your first time you came? Oh, I don't... That's tough. Um, probably to learn a lot because I was just getting into shoe building. Okay. What were you wanting to learn? Just learn a system and learn how to forge up section. That was something that I didn't know, but was overhearing people say. Yeah, just like basic shoemaking. Yeah, just basic shoemaking. Basic. Yeah. What did you kind of do to prepare for it? Uh, for the first time, not much. I built several at home, but didn't know what I was doing. What did you do to prepare for this one? Practice a ton. Did you? Uh, yeah, metric ton. How much, like? Was it hard to try to like figure out a time frame to get it to practice in? I, I mostly didn't do time frames at home. I just tried to build my shoes. And then like a week ago, I timed it by myself and I didn't use a striker. And that's something that's a total new element to run your tools different handed. Yeah. Is it weird the first when you come to the contest and you practice only by yourself and you come to work with a striker, is it weird the first time you're working with a striker? Uh, yeah, I think so. Does it change up your system it much? It changes the system, yeah. Yeah. Lose total focus because now you're not running everything. Yeah. I think. The, ne the next shoe's coming at you as soon as you're done with that one. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah. Did you should do make any changes from day one to day two this weekend? No, not really. You stuck with the plan? Yeah, stuck with the system. Do you, do you feel like your emotions get to you at all when, you, when the clock starts? Oh, huge, yeah. Hitting that center dot right when they say go is tough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I've been under pressure my whole life and other things, but there's something about this that's different. Yeah, it really wakes you up. Yep. Did you, uh, were you happy with your results? Yeah. Yeah, I got to learn a lot. That's what I was here for. Yeah, a whole lot. So you said this is your third novice. Yep. You're going to go ahead and run for the cat stack. Yeah, I'm going to uh, take after that journeyman. I've passed the written here recently. And uh, so now I'm going to go tackle that horse and then I'm jumping right in the categories. Nice, man. Well, thanks for doing a little interview with us. We appreciate it, man. You bet. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you, Tanner. Appreciate it. This episode is also brought to you by our fine sponsor, World Championship Blacksmiths. Ultimately, they are a business, but their model is based upon help each and every one of you find and strive for the goals you set upon yourselves that most of us desperately need. Not only do they provide the competition aspect, they bring a community of people together that will have your back no matter what. So sign up for a contest and work towards those goals that you set for yourself. And you can also use code BRAINS in their online store for 10% off any merchandise. It's not including membership or contest fees. So go to www.worldchampionshipblacksmiths.com and use code BRAINS and buy yourself some merch. Thanks, everyone. All right, what is your name? 
My name is Trey Hayden. Is this your first first WCB? Uh, no, this would be my third. I went to Madison and then Edgewood, and now here I am. What before you went to your first one? What did you expect them to be like? I expected them to be kind of in, a little intense, a little bit, you know, from like the outsider's perspective, it seems a little inclusive. But yeah, once I got here, it was it was a pretty cool deal. What did you do to kind of prepare for it? Oh, I mean, getting other people to look at your work is always a big help. Uh, being able to find a mentor that you can kind of rely on to keep you on the right track so you don't go down any weird rabbit holes that you don't need to be doing, that's certainly helped. Yeah. Did, did you have any, like, big hurdles when you were practicing? Uh, just making it a priority, you know? That's the big thing. Just, just kind of. Yeah, time management, absolutely, you know? Because, like... So are you riding with another guy? Yeah, I ride once a week with uh, Brian Stralo. He's been a huge help with a lot of things. Is that how when you try to get practice in then? Uh, sometimes, yeah, and other times I'll practice on my own and I'll, you know, try and bring something to him. But uh, yeah, no, for sure, that's I been a huge help. Idea. Do you work with a striker much before the contest? No, actually, that was something I had done in the past I thought I would integrate a striker earlier on and then as I kind of practiced more at my house I realized it was better to just try and do as much as I can by myself and get as much as that in and then have the striker just help keep me on track yeah is it a little hard at the beginning when you first get in there with a the striker I think it's um, it's tempting to rely on them you know like you want to have the experienced guy kind of hold your hand, so to speak, on some things, but learn helplessness comes along pretty quick when you do that. And so, it kind of seems Tom, like when you rely on the striker too much, you're just lost. The you lose. Yeah, I think they. I think a lot of guys get in trouble because they go, they get one thing where the striker will point something out, and then they're like, "Well, now I'm completely lost." And help me for the whole rest of the deal, yeah. and it drags. It sucks a lot of time out of it. If you can get your system down by yourself, like. I did it, everything except for, like I said, the guy running the fire and just keeping me on time. But uh, you know what you need to do next, next, next. I think that's huge, man. Yeah. <clears throat> so you kind of whipped ass day one. Yeah. Is there anything you changed from day one to day two? Yeah. Uh, I thought I had a tight toe in my um, pine shoe, and I thought, I mean, it was sitting second, but I was looking at the picture, and I'm thinking, you know, it has a lot bolder toe. I'm like, I don't really want to try and put a bolder toe in it today. And I don't know why, I should have just kept it. it the same because I did put a boulder toe and it went right down the table a bit. But oh, really? yeah, but I mean, it's still middle of the table and there's other aspects on it that could have been better. But uh, yeah, it was interesting. I, I should have just stuck with my system from day one and just oh, you focused made a change. on that. Yeah, I did. And do, you, do you let your emotions get to you pretty bad when the clock starts? Not anymore, you know, I just kind of, I want it to go like I practiced it at home, and if it kind of at this point, I'm like, regardless of what the judges feel, you know, I'm just gonna try and do what I've practiced, and if it goes how I've done at home, I'm really happy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if I'm proud of the work that I did there, I think that's good, and that helps a lot with nerves, because then I'm not all, oh man, how am I gonna do, you know? Do you think it's gotten easier because this is your third one versus your first one? Absolutely, yeah. Just coming to a more often exposure therapy of sorts, huh? Uh-huh. Will you do another novice or will you move on up? No, I'm moving. Yep. I'll be all on the cat one next year. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to it. I think it's, it's time to do that. You know, I've got comfortable with these now. I'm ready to do the others. How long have you been shooing? I've been shooing. <laughs> I cold shot for like three years and uh, then finally got smart and went to a horseshoeing school before I went full time. So it's been five years now, but only been doing the hot shoeing stuff for two years. Right. Yeah. Awesome, Trey. Well, thanks for joining us, Yeah, man. thank you, Riley. Uh, I thank appreciate you. it, Gavin. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. One of the largest fairy supply stores in the world is stepping up Forging Brains podcast to help you guys by sending you on your way with a cool gift when you use the code BRAINS at checkout. Wellshod carries so many different supplies throughout their warehouse that honestly we could probably do a whole podcast just talking about all the different supplies, tools, anvils, all sorts of products that they carry throughout their warehouse. It's insane. If you guys haven't been there, 
you should put it on the list to go check them out just to go see them but also to go buy some stuff too their recent products they've been making in-house is anvils they're producing the scott anvils as well as the new scott eden's 200 pound anvil i believe they've also been doing the cliff carroll anvils for some time as well and john harshbarger talked about that in his episode previously on forging brains podcast so when you guys go to order with Wellshod, either online or on the telephone, use code BRAINS, and they'll hook you up with a free product in your order. And don't be afraid to let us know what that gift is. We're happy to be working with Wellshod because they are invested in this trade, the same as the rest of us, and not just there for profits and money. Plus, I don't know how you can beat that $10 flat shipping they always have. Like, that's insane. You can't get a better deal than that. So either call them up on the telephone or go online at www.wellshod.com. And when you go to check out on your order, use the code BRAINS and they'll hook you up with something cool in your order. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about working with Wellshod. This is going to be great. No podcast studio. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is your name and how long have you been shooting horses? Uh, Amber Madden, about 13 years. Nice. And is this your first time competing at WCB? Yeah, it's my first year. Nice. Is this, did you do all three of them? Yes, I've been to all three. Cool. What did you expect going to your first one? Oh, I thought I was going to get, like, thrown to the wolves. Oh, yeah. really? No, but everyone here is super friendly, but I just figured, okay, fierce competition, um, sharp, harsh learning curves. But no, everyone's super friendly, um, super helpful. Like, I, I turned in my first set of shoes, and it was middle of the table, but I got so much advice. I like legends. I was talking to Tom Willoughby, Roy Bloom gave me some advice. I've got notes from everybody. Mike Poe was the judge. That was super cool at the first one. Um, and it's just all kind of taken off from there. Hi, so that's really good. What, what did you do to prepare? I built a lot of shoes. Yeah, so I built a lot of shoes. I hopped in a lot of shops um, and just really um, dug for it. Yeah. Did you a lot of people in your area that you could go to practice with? Yeah, so actually, matter of fact, I've got uh, Justin Rather and Jonathan Lambert 20 minutes from me, so okay. we would meet up once a week, uh, yeah, just to practice. So you're able to get together and actually do two man, like practice with a striker to make the novice shoes? So I do, I do every so often, but I really wanted to be able to mostly do it myself and then use that striker like for advice as far as getting the shape in and mm -hmm. just seeing those things that I wasn't seeing. Because I still, I want this to like benefit my everyday work and I go out by myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. But did you hit any hurdles that you like, big hurdles in practice? Yeah. Um, like specifically like in the shoes or? Yeah, just like we were, like just in general, like man, this took me a while to get over, like the horn or tooling or something like that. <sighs> Tooling's tough. Like I'm still working on tooling. Matter of fact, I had someone tune up some tools for me yesterday and it made all the difference this morning. Um, but like little things, like I am still, like heel checks got me today. So I'll still be working on heel checks. Um, finally, I had someone tell me that I was actually moving around. Like I s stick my feet and I like move everything around me. Yeah. So I was finally like moving around the anvil better today. That was pretty cool. Un yeah. un unchain your feet like, <laughs> well, like, like man, you're a... concrete into the ground. That's it exactly. It's like <laughs> I am here. I'm solid. Like, yeah, yeah, no, but I was moving around today. That was cool. That's good. Yeah. And I, I do think it's a, uh, because sometimes you see people running around and you're like, man, the shoe's lighter than you. <laughs> but it is, you can, you can free up a little bit. Uh, did you change anything besides tooling uh, from day one to day two? Yeah, so, so yesterday I was really focused on making a section. Like one of our judges at the last contest really wanted section. These judges not so much, so I really tried to focus on not drawing out my, my branches as much. And I think that helped my placing some today. Okay. Yeah. That's a good good thing to notice. Yeah, got to know what your judges want. Yeah, yeah. Do your emotions change or get to you when the clock starts? Uh, my first contest, yeah. I just had no idea how it was going to go. I was excited that today I was pretty well, like, relaxed going into it, and I was able to carry that through. Um, but I have a feeling when I get into the categories, I'm going to be all over the place all over again. So, yeah, emotions will do it. So yeah. were you happy with your, your results from this weekend? Yeah. At one point, yesterday I kind of had a scattered grade run. Today was more smooth and controlled, and I turned those shoes in and walked away like, you know what, I don't care how it plays. 
that felt better. It was way more conscious. I was, yeah, I was happier with that. Nice. Do you, so you've done your three novices. You're going to go ahead and step up to the cats. Yeah, of course. Awesome. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> I'm not ready for it, but it'll be fine. Yeah, no one. Yeah. Never ready for anything in life. Yeah. <laughs> Just got to get in there and do it, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Thank you a bunch, Amber, yeah. for doing this uh, yeah. interview and for coming out. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's been awesome. fun. Good luck in the future. Thank you. Great. I want to take a moment to tell you guys about Wellshod. And not just that they carry every item you can think of from every brand, including from the little guys. You can get some Adam Farr punches, some Ben Sneer hammers. They pretty much got it all in the hard-to-beat $10 shipping. But I also want to take a moment to talk about John himself. You see the Wellshod name at pretty much every single contest that you go to. And not only that, you see John himself there supporting what we do and investing his time. Heck, John's even jumped in the competition in his ring himself at some of the WCB contests. That speaks huge to me, and it also speaks huge that John wanted to support what we're doing with the podcast. They've agreed that if you guys use Brains at checkout, they're going to put a little mystery item in the box for you. So go ahead and support them, what they're doing, and it helps support us because in all, we're all just one community. All right, what is your name and how long have you been shooting horses? Uh, my name's Jason Fleming. I've been shooting horses about 20 years. Nice. Is this your first time competing in a WCB? No, I've gone to all three novice competitions this year. Started in Madison and Edgewood. So this is your first year in the WCB? First year, yep. Okay. Yep. What did you expect going to your first one? Well, I expected to at least be middle of the road, halfway through the pack, just kind of hoping some of my experience would carry me through what I'm lacking in shoe building ability. So um, it's kind of what I expected there. and. Did a little better than that, so I was happy with that first time. Nice. Did you what did you what have you done to prepare for the contest? <clears throat> you shoot horses every day. <laughs> um, I drive a lot where I'm from in there in Nebraska, it's spread out everywhere. So I drive a lot of miles every day and shoe a bunch of horses, so it's hard to find that practice time. So um, you know, definitely just concentrating on my work every day and trying to bring those shapes and things back into my shoe building. How did you find out about the WCB? Oh, I have uh, I met Craig seven or eight years ago when he came up to uh, judge our contest in Nebraska and just kind of followed along and, you know, okay. seen what was happening on Facebook and, and just decided this would be a good way to uh, prepare myself for my journeyman. So I'm hoping to do that in the spring and you know, this was a good way to get me building shoes since I've never done that in my career before, so. Did you have any, like, hurdles within your practice? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, every few years I hit a roadblock just like a lot of guys do. You know, you kind of have to stop and take a look at yourself and go, man, that ain't right. I got to figure out how to fix it. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Did you have to change anything this weekend from day one to day two? Just really pay attention to my section. Um, you know, I looked at my shoes, and I have a hard time keeping track of my shoes once they go on the table. Um, until they open up the cards, I don't know where I'm at. So um, when I got my shoes yesterday, I looked at them and went, wow, I've got a lot of work to do. So today I concentrated a lot more on just keeping my section together, and, and it, it definitely I made a difference, definitely. Oh, yeah. do, you, do your emotions get to you when the clock starts? No, I stay pretty calm. Um, and I think that's just my experience, my age. Um, you know, I shoe horses pretty efficiently, so the, the clock really doesn't bother me. I know I've got plenty of time. Um, I, I don't run up against the end of the clock and still have a bunch of work to do on my shoes. So, um, no, the, the, the time really doesn't affect me too bad. Was your third contest easier than like your first contest? For I as think as far as like the emotions go. Definitely, I think the nerves, you know, aren't here like they were the first time. Yep. Um, for sure, I'm a lot more comfortable. There's a lot um, of people watching you. All right. A lot of people watching me, yeah. <laughs> yep. And did you do better from the first time you did it to the third time, to this time? Yeah, I think I ended up ninth overall um, in Madison in the spring, and then I was sixth overall at Edgewood. So I don't know that I'm going to beat that sixth overall here, but uh, I'm sitting eighth right now. Okay. Uh, before today, so um, match play points definitely. Help out. Definitely helped me. Yep, definitely. Good. Yeah. Were you happy with your outcome results so far? Oh, I always think I could have done better. You know, I, I definitely uh, 
would have liked to see my shoes farther up the table. I think my uh, hind shoe today got four, so I'm I'm happy with that for sure. So, do you think you'll do it? Like, well, I think you can only do three novices. Yep, this is my so last one. Are you going to go up into the categories now? Um, I th I think what's probably going to happen in my life is I'm going to go for my journeyman in the spring, and I've got some aches and pains like everybody else. So. Uh, you know, trying to decide whether I'm going to keep competing. I'm sure I'll compete some, but I don't know that I'm never going to be a cat four. I, I'm just, I don't have that left in my career. So um, I'll probably still come to a few and, and try. But like I said, 20 years of not building shoes, it shows. And I've got a long ways to go to be able to compete with a lot of these guys. So has it been hard to break any old habits? Oh, definitely. After shoeing definitely. for 20 years. Yeah, I, I make a lot of mistakes and. Uh, my strikers, they're like, stop doing that. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. So you say you got you got into it to try to help your journeyman and stuff go better. Have you practiced your journeyman at all now where you're like, I do. okay, do, um, like, do you think it helps? I definitely think it helps. I've got a way better understanding of a system on how to build shoes now. So like my own horses at home, when I shoe them, I, I just make journeyman runs on those at home. I don't build shoes very often at the horse. I'm still grabbing cake shoes off the rack, but every once in a while, I just, I got enough time, I'll build a set, so I do. Nice. Um, and every time I do that, they get a little bit better. So I, I think I'm probably prepared for the horse and possibly the bar shoe at this point, but I'm gonna have to study hard for that written test. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you taking some time. And I appreciate you asking me. Good luck on your journey, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Our great friends over at Ferrier Box have been supporting us on Forging Brains for a while now. Since the time that they have sponsored the show, we have received many great products that I wouldn't have thought about buying, or because I was being a tight ass. But they were sent to me in their subscription box, and now I use those products in my day-to-day -day practice. Each box is sent bi-monthly, and in those boxes is an array of the top tools and products that have been tested by the greats in our industry. So go to www.farrybox.com and use code BRAINS for 25% off your first month's order. You won't be disappointed, I'll tell you that. Let's talk about our newest sponsor of Forge and Brains podcast, Yukon Forge. If you're a fan of the show, then you've probably already heard the interview we did with John McNerney and all the badass things he's accomplished in his career, as well as the type of character this man has. John's graciously offering you guys 10% off on anything you order when you go to www.yukonforge.com and use code BRAINS at checkout. On his website, you'll find he has a variety of high-quality, hand-built tools made by him personally. His hoof knives are some of the best on the market. All his tongs are forged from 4140 steel to hold up to whatever you're grabbing and holding. John's been developing a new hammer out of 4140 steel that looks pretty dang sick, and I can't wait to try one. His fullers are handmade from S7, and I personally know of some that have withstood the years of hammer blows. Also, a new and unique tool John has developed is the propane nut. There's nothing worse than stripping out your propane regulator from not having the right tool. The Yukon Forge propane nut relate, replaces whatever you had been using for a simple tool that you can tighten and loosen with your fingertips with ease. So go to www.yukonforge.com and use code BRAINS for 10% off your order. That's a hell of a deal, my friends. This episode is also brought to you by our fine sponsor, World Championship Blacksmiths. Ultimately, they are a business, but their model is based upon help each and every one of you find and strive for the goals you set upon yourselves that most of us desperately need. Not only do they provide the competition aspect, they bring a community of people together that will have your back no matter what. So sign up for a contest and work towards those goals that you set for yourself. And you can also use code BRAINS in their online store for 10% off any merchandise. It's not including membership or contest fees. So go to 
worldchampionshipblacksmith.com and use code BRAINS and buy yourself some merch. Thanks, everyone. I want to take a moment to tell you guys about Wellshod. And not just that they carry every item you can think of from every brand, including from the little guys. You can get some Adam Farr punches, some Ben Sneer hammers. They pretty much got it all in the hard-to-beat $10 shipping. But I also want to take a moment to talk about John himself. You see the Wellshod name at pretty much every single contest that you go to. And not only that, you see John himself there supporting what we do and investing his time. Like John's even jumped in the competition in his ring himself at some of the WCB contests. That speaks huge to me. And it also speaks huge that John wanted to support what we're doing with the podcast. They've agreed that if you guys use Brains at checkout, they're going to put a little mystery item in the box for you. So go ahead and support them, what they're doing, and it helps support us. Because in all, we're all just one community. I want to take a moment to tell you guys about Wellshod. And not just that they carry every item you can think of from every brand, including from the little guys. You can get some Adam Farr punches, some Ben Sneer hammers. They pretty much got it all in the hard-to-beat $10 shipping. But I also want to take a moment to talk about John himself. You see the Wellshod name at pretty much every single contest that you go to. And not only that, you see John himself there supporting what we do and investing his time. Heck, John's even jumped in the competition in his ring himself at some of the WCB contests. That speaks huge to me, and it also speaks huge that John wanted to support what we're doing with the podcast. They've agreed that if you guys use Brains at checkout, they're going to put a little mystery item in the box for you. So go ahead and support them, what they're doing, and it helps support us. Because in all, we're all just one community. Our great friends over at Ferry Box have been supporting us on Forging Brains for a while now. Since the time that they have sponsored the show... We have received many great products that I wouldn't have thought about buying or because I was being a tight ass, but they were sent to me in their subscription box and now I use those products in my day-to-day practice. Each box is sent bi-monthly and in those boxes is an array of the top tools and products that have been tested by the greats in our industry. So go to www.fairybox.com and use code BRAINS 25% off your first month's order. You won't be disappointed. I'll tell you that. Brought to you by the World Championship Blacksmiths. We're so excited to have the Trinka family support what we're doing here. It is a huge part of the topics that we have on this podcast, and it's where we've gained a lot of community at, and exactly what they are. They are a community that supports education through competition. So if you were looking for a support system behind you on your journey of becoming a better farrier, Go join up and go to an event. You will never regret it. And they've been nice enough to offer us a 10% off on their online store or call-in orders for everything besides competitions and membership. So go head them up, get some merch, and let some people know what you support. Thank you, guys. First of all, we owe Fairybox a huge thank you for being one of the first ones to jump on and support what we're doing here with the podcast. If you haven't heard about Fairybox, it's a bi-monthly box that comes to your door. And it's filled with goods, kind of like the Chewy Box of your dogs, but this one's not filled with crap. She gets advice from the top guys of the industry and puts together a box.